I know for myself, it took me like a good two or three years to even start landing anything. And I think for most of the Nordic kids, it was kind of the same, but for Torstein, it was pretty much the, the first year that we were in the back country, he was stomping everything. He had a lot of natural talent. He was so good at riding park and his tricks were so fine tuned that he just adapted to the back country super quick. Yeah, it was probably that out of all of us, like Ika, me and Aero and Niemela, I think for sure Torstein adapted the quickest because he was landing tricks right away. That was really impressive to me, I remember. I think he has a lot to prove to himself. I don't think he really cares what anyone else thinks. It's always been about proving things to himself. And for me, obviously, I'm just, you know, a, a photographer along for the ride. It's, it's actually kind of nice, because you're just like, all right, you're gonna do what? I remember at the time, we were kind of frustrated that DC didn't hire more filmers, because it's always tough when, you, if you go to the back country and you have four guys or five guys in a the crew, there's not gonna be a lot of landings left, so. Thorstein kind of uh, bringing his own filmer around and uh, he was putting his own money into it like it, it wasn't paid by DC so I thought that it was that was cool like he actually invested in himself you know and took a chance and obviously you get a lot more footage when you have your own filmer around and I think that was smart I think now if you look back probably everybody should have done that <laughs> Absent Films uh, really got on my radar. The first one I got was Vivid, and uh, the next one I think was that I got was Pop, and that's when you know, like, my mind started exploding on, um, like, Rice came on the scene and really started like, oh, you can go like three times as big, like, you know, <laughs> it's like this. What's been done, it's cool and all, but like you can go like three times as big as that. Yeah, Roman, the Marchi, Mueller, and Freddie K. I was a huge Freddie K fan. Standard films, you know, around white balance and that whole, uh, the, the whole industry at that point was like, that was that was so sick to, to witness for, as a little kid. The Torsten and Haldor had some really good sessions. We would always build these park jumps in the spring. Um, a lot of times it was at Alpine Meadows when Torstein was filming with us and we'd, we'd build these jumps in the springtime and Torstein would just go off. He would just, just him and Haldor would just push each other and just do some really sick tricks. Alpine killed it for us. They built this spine feature with hip landings on the sides going over though, like hitting it as a jump. Good amount of air time, just like sick feeling, soft landing. Everybody stomping tricks left and right. Good times. We hired Kirk Bereska to do follow cams, who a lot of people are probably familiar with. His his follow cam work was some of the, you know, before Gimbal God, he was doing the, the really, you know, jumping the kickers with the snowboarders right next to him. And a lot of times holding a big, you know, holding a big steady cam rig, not just a GoPro. So Kirk was just a major, uh, in, you know, he helped bring a lot of the footage to life, I'd say with Torstein, you know, being able to jump the kickers right next to him and Haldor. Pretty much the best session ever. <laughs> you say that at the end of every session. <laughs> this, this was the best session ever though. It's always really cool to, to watch these guys progress from barely know how to drive a snowmobile to where Torstein now is just a total badass on a sled. He's way better than I am. And just watching Torstein in the backcountry, you know, read the terrain from, you know, knowing where little trannies are and, you know, what there might be pepper underneath or a tree or where's the takeoff. There's so much to backcountry riding and it's just cool to watch these guys learn the, the variables and the potential dangers and figure it all out to where Torstein now is just fully proficient and just, he makes the calls. That, that was cool. A couple years ago, I was shooting for shred bots for him and he just invited me out to shoot and it was cool. I just kicked back and he was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, cool, I just set up and then he's like, I'm gonna do that. I just, I didn't even have to think. I just set my, set my camera up and hit the trigger. So it was cool. You know, I always, I always, I feel fortunate to be able to watch these guys progress. I, I guess I guess 
Well, he's got like such a good work ethic that, and then add that with the confidence. I guess he must have so much confidence from hitting like park, massive park jumps that he's like, get out in the backcountry and it's like, this is like, it's so soft. What's going to go wrong? You know what I mean? Like, I guess I've never really talked to him about it, but he's just like, uh, he's just, Anything he does, it's just like, there's not, it never looks like there's a doubt that he's not gonna nail it. I think when we first met him, he came across as a bit cocky, but I actually think it's a, a confidence level. Like it's, it's, you know, it's confidence, not, not cocky. He's just like really confident in himself and everything he does. Um, he's, he's, he's a bit of an artist. Like he just, he oozes confidence. He just wants to snowboard now and like enjoy life as much as he can. That's just, that's like the, I don't know if that's the way he thinks, but that's the vibe I'm getting when I'm with him. He's just like, this is the thing that I love the most. I'm just gonna like make the most out of it and enjoy it as much as I can. Torstein would drive the jump he would drive what was possible and his vision for that would kind of dictate some of the shooting scenarios and it would pull other riders out of their comfort zone or they felt like they didn't have a strong enough voice. Most of the time, in my opinion, when that happened, it was because he was kind of, he was growing things. He was pushing things past where they had been and that makes people uncomfortable. And he had that vision, he wanted everyone to play he wanted everyone to be included but he was making things so consequential sometimes that some guys didn't feel that good about playing and that happens but he did that to you know scratch the itch that he had to to push himself and push snowboarding further and further and further and uh you know it's like get on the train let's go and if you don't want to get on the train, the train's still going, and there it went. He has a vision, and you're, you're there for his vision, and that's the plan, like, there's no... And it's, it's sometimes, like, hard for certain people. For me as well, it's, like, hard to be in that so structured base where I like to, like, be more loose, and he doesn't, like, being on a loose program, he wants to be pretty on point. This is where we're going, this is what we're hitting. And of pretty much nine out of 10 times that works better than the loose program, but sometimes the loose program is a little more fun.